Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, we will see how to create a custom cursor for your website. So here we can see we have this custom cursor and we also have a slight delay for the outer circle of this cursor. So we will see how to create this custom cursor in this video. And we also have some basic animations for this. So when you hover over this, we can see we have the underline animation and also the outer circle of the custom cursor has a higher size. So when we hover over any of these menu items, we have that effect. And we also have a basic animation for the menu items. So if I just refresh this page, we can see we have this animation. So this is what we're going to design in this video. So let's get started. Alright, so here I have created this project called custom cursor and I have just opened it with VS code and I have a folder called IMG and in that we have this uh, custom cursor image. So this is the image right here. So we're going to use this as the custom cursor. So let's start by creating all the files. So let's create a new file and we'll name it index.html. Now let's create a file for the CSS. So I'll just name it style.css and we'll also create a JavaScript file. So I'll just name it main.js. Now let's go to the index.html file and we'll start with the HTML. So in VS Code you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And let me just link the style.css file over here. So I just type link and uh, here in the href we'll just type style.css and we'll also link our JavaScript file. So I'll just type script colon src and press tab and I'll just type main.js over here. Now let's create a division to contain all the content. So I'll just create a division with the class of wrapper and in that division we will have a nav. So in the nav we will have an unordered list and in that we'll have the menu items. So let's create an unordered list and we'll have some list items and in that we have anchor tags. So we have about services and contact. So let me just copy this and paste it two more times. And here we'll type services and here we'll type contact. Now after the nav element ends, we will also create a division for the cursor for the outer circle that we had for the cursor. So let's create a division and we'll give it a class of cursor and we'll just leave it empty. We will style everything in the CSS. All right, so that's basically it for the HTML. Now let's go to our CSS and let's start styling our page. Before that, let's open this in our browser. So I have this extension called live server here installed in VS Code. So I'll just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. All right, so let's go to the style.css and first of all, let's add some resetting styles. So I'll just type star to select all the elements and we'll just remove the margin and padding. Now let's style the wrapper division. Now for the wrapper division, we'll have a background color of 161A1D and we'll set a height of 100 viewport height. Now let's position this navigation menu to the center. So I'll just type display of flex and align items to the center and justify content to the center. These three lines of code will bring all the items that are inside the wrapper to the center vertically and horizontally. Now let's remove these bullets. So I'll just type nav ul and we'll set the list style to none. And let's also add a margin between these three list items. So let's type nav ul li and let's set a margin of 32 pixels top and bottom and zero for left and right. Now let's target the anchor tags. So let's type nav ul li a. Now first of all, let's set the color of the text to cbf 3f0 and let's set the font family to Roboto and uh, we'll also set a font size of 30 pixels and let's also set the font weight to bold and we'll remove the underlines by typing text decoration to none and let's make it uppercase so just type text transform uppercase and we'll also have some spacing between these letters so we'll just type letter spacing and uh, we will have a letter spacing of 8 pixels and now when we hover over these uh, anchor tags we need to have an underline so for that we will use an after selector so let's type nav ul li a colon colon after and for the after we need to have the content property so just type content now if you add some content over here like for example say one two three we can see that after every anchor tag we have one two three written over here so we'll just remove the content from here and we will add some more styles to add the underline. So let's set a width of 100% and a height of 8 pixels. 
and uh, we will give it a background color of F94144. Now we want to position this underline relative to these anchor tags. So for the anchor tag we have to type position relative and here for the after we can type position of absolute and we'll set the bottom position to negative 8 pixels and the left position to 0. Alright, now we can see that we have these underlines. Now we don't want to display the underline at the beginning. We will set the width to 0 at the beginning. So let's type width equals 0. And when we hover over the anchor tags, we will set the width to 100%. So let's type nav ulli a colon hover colon colon after. Now when you hover over this uh, anchor tag, we will have these styles for the after element. So here we simply need to set the width to 100%. And let's hover over this. And we can see that when we hover over the anchor tags, we have 100% of width for the underline. Now we want to have a smooth transition between width 0 and width 100%. So let's add a transition and we'll set all to 500 milliseconds. And now let's hover over this and we can see that everything is working all right. Now let's go ahead and change the cursor. So let's target the wrapper division for changing the cursor. So here we'll type cursor and here we'll provide the URL of the image. So I'll just type URL and uh, we have images slash let's see what is the name it is img slash custom cursor so let's type img slash custom cursor dot png and uh, then we need to type auto now let's save it and uh, now we can see that we have the cursor which is the image that we had and it has replaced the default cursor in our website now when we hover over these uh, anchor tags we have the other cursor so we want to change this as well. So let's go to the anchor tags and uh, let's type nav ulli a colon hover and we'll set the cursor to the same cursor over here. So I'll just copy this line of code and paste it over here. Right now let's hover over this and uh, we have the same cursor over here as well. Right now the next thing we need to do is uh, we want to create the outer circle for the cursor. So we had already created a division over here with the class of cursor. So let's style that. So let's target that over here. We'll just type cursor and uh, we will set the position to fixed. We'll change the position uh, using JavaScript and uh, let's set the width to 40 pixels and the height to 40 pixels and border radius of 50%. We cannot see it yet. So let's add a border and we'll add a border of two pixels solid light gray and here we can see we have this outer circle for the cursor let me just bring it to the left and this is the outer circle for the cursor now we need to add one more class for this cursor so when we hover over these uh, menu items we want to change the size of this cursor so let's create one more class over here so just have cursor dot large now make sure that you don't have any space between cursor and large because uh, we want the division to have both these classes for the following CSS to work. Now when we hover over these menu items, we will change the height and the width to 70 pixels. So let's type height 70 pixels and uh, width to 70 pixels. Now let's go back to our HTML and uh, let's just add the large class over here and let's see whether it works. So I'll just type large and now we can see we have the larger outer circle and when we remove the large class, we have the smaller circle. Now let's add some JavaScript to make this outer circle follow this cursor. So we have already linked our JavaScript file over here. So let's go to main.js and let's target the cursor division. So let's type const cursor and we'll type document dot query selector. And here we'll type dot cursor. Now we have to add an event listener. So whenever the cursor moves, we want to track the position of the cursor. And we have to set the position of this outer circle to the position of the cursor. So let's add the event listener to the document. So just type document dot add event listener. And we want to check for the event called mouse move. So let's type that over here. And let's add an arrow function over here. So whenever the mouse moves, whatever we have over here will be executed. So first of all, let's just display the mouse pointer position. So I'll just type console dot log. To get the mouse position, we can use the page x value. So for that, you have to add a variable name over here. 
So I'll just type E. You can type anything you want. So here I will just type E dot page X and uh, let's save it. So let's open the inspector. So I'll just right click and inspect and let's go to console. And here we can see a list of all the X values for our cursor. So let me just move the cursor in our website. So here we can see we have the values for the cursor position. So let's just close this and we know that we get the value of the page X. So let's store this inside a variable. So I'll just type let left position equals e dot page X and let top position equals e dot page Y. Now we have to set the left and the top position of this division with the class of cursor which is the outer circle to these variables over here left position and top position. So we have already referenced that over here cursor. So let's type cursor dot style dot left equals left position and cursor dot style dot top equals top position and we also have to concatenate pixels so I'll just type plus pixels and uh, even here we'll just type plus pixels right now let's move the mouse and let's see whether it works and we can see that our uh, outer circle is following the mouse cursor now we need to position it correctly so we will move it 50% to the left and 50% to the top. So let's go back to the style.css and uh, for the cursor we will type transform translate and we'll type negative 50% for the x and negative 50% for the y. And uh, now we can see that it is almost in the center. Now the problem is that the dot that we have in the center is starting from the exact center of the outer circle. So we have to tweak the X and the Y position that we have. So I just calculated these values and uh, it came up to be four pixels. So I'll just type plus four and even for page Y we will type plus four. All right now let's move our mouse and uh, now we can see that everything is working all right. The dot is perfectly in the center of the outer circle. Now when you hover over these uh, menu items we want to change the size of the outer circle. So we have already created a class called large in the CSS. So here we have the large class. Now when you hover over any of these menu items, we want to add the large class to the cursor. So first of all, let's target the menu items. So we'll just target these uh, anchor tags. So let's go to main.js and I'll just type const links and we'll just type document dot query selector and we'll type nav ulliA. Now since there are multiple items that we are selecting, we need to add query selector all. So I'll just type all over here. Now we need to add event listeners to all the anchor tags. So for that we'll be using a for each loop. So I'll just type links, which is what we have called it over here. And I will type dot for each. Now here you have to create a callback function. So I'll just have an argument called link and I'll just create this arrow function. Now we can reference each of the links inside this uh, links array using this variable called link. So let's type link dot add event listener. And we will add an event listener for mouse enter. So I'll just type mouse enter. So mouse enter means when we hover over the item. So let's add an arrow function over here. And uh, here we'll just type cursor dot class list dot add. And here we'll type large. And let's create one more for each loop. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here. And uh, here we'll type mouse leave. And when we leave the anchor tags, we need to remove the large class. So I'll just type remove over here. So now let's hover over this anchor tags and see whether we have the large class being added. And we can see that it is not working. So let's go back to the style.css. Now for it to work, we have to remove the pointer events from the cursor. Now because cursor is a division, so we can see we have this division with the class of cursor. So that's why we cannot access the anchor tags because uh, the division is above the anchor tags. So here you have to type pointer events to none. And now let's hover over these anchor tags. And now we can see that the large class is being added. Now we also need to have a smooth transition. So let's add transition and we'll have transition for width and height. So I'll just type 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. And even for height, we'll type 1000 milliseconds. Right now let's hover over this and we can see that everything is working all right. We don't have any problems. Now the last thing we will do is we will add some animations to this list items when the page loads. So let's go over here to the li 
and uh, let's type animation and we will name the animation fade down and we'll set the duration to 2000 milliseconds and we'll type forward so that the animation stays at the last frame and uh, now let's create the animation fade down so for that you have to type at keyframes and then the name of the animation so the name of the animation that we have set is fade down so let's type that over here now at the beginning we will set the opacity of these list items to zero and we'll also move it to the top a little bit so here we will type transform translate y and uh, we'll set it to negative 100 pixels and we'll also set the opacity to zero and here for the last frame so we'll just type 100% and for the last frame we will type opacity of 1 and transform translate y to zero so now we can see that we have this animation for the list items now let's add different animation delays to each of these list items now we can do that easily using javascript so let's go to our main.js file and we'll just type const nav links and we'll type document dot query selector all and nav ul li and we'll just use a for each loop for that so i'll just add a comment animation and here we'll type nav links dot for each now let's create an arrow function and uh, we will have two arguments for this arrow function one is for each of the list items so i'll just type li so with this variable li we can target each of the individual list items inside this array now for the other argument we will have the value of the index so i'll just type i for that you can name these anything you want all right so here we will type li dot style dot animation delay equals zero plus i times let's say 140 and we'll concatenate it with uh, milliseconds so let me explain to you what this does so we are looping through each of these list items so in the first iteration we have the li set to the first list item which is about and here we can see that we are setting the animation delay for the first list item about to this value right here so this is 0 plus i i is the index value and it starts with 0 so here we have 0 plus 0 times 140 so 0 times 140 is 0 so everything adds up to 0 milliseconds and then we go to the next iteration where the list item is uh, services and we are setting the animation delay to 0 plus i which is now 1 so 1 times 140 is 140 so 0 plus 140 is 140 so we are setting the animation delay of the second element to 140 milliseconds and in this way we are setting the animation delay for all the other elements so even if you have more list items this will still work so let's save it and we can see that the animation is working and uh, let's just change the cubic bezier of this animation we can have different easing values so if you type ease in out we can see a different type of easing for the animation now if you want to have advanced easing values you can right click over here and go to inspect and then go to the list item and here we can see we have this button so if i click on that we can edit this curve so you can go ahead and uh, change these easing values over here and then just go ahead and copy this to your code so i just came up with an easing value so i just type cubic bezier and the values are 0 0.43 0 0.53 0 0.5 and 1.02 so let's save it and now we can see that we have this animation for the list items so everything is working all right we have the custom cursor and uh, when we hover over this we have these animations so that's basically how you add a custom cursor to your website so if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day